Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and I will be talking about the Pythagorean theorem today and how to find the length of missing sides of the triangle using the Pythagorean theorem. Quick recap, the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In our previous video, I showed you this example with 3, 4, 5, just showing that 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to 5 squared. And that's shown visually. You can draw some boxes in there. Now, while this may be a silly thing to show you, what I want to emphasize here is that these right angled triangles will always work out like this. The two smaller sides squared will, when they added together, equal the larger side squared. Now let's talk about um, those sides real quick. The longest side is a special side. That's called the hypotenuse, and it's also labeled as C. So just like with most other things, when you add them together, you add up a smaller value and a smaller value, and you get the largest value. It's the same thing with this theorem. A plus B, the smaller sides added together, equals C, squared, squared, squared. All right? It only works on right angle triangles, and it can be used to find the missing length of one side of a right angle triangle, and that's what we're going to be doing today. First of all, let's rearrange our Pythagorean theorem. If we're trying to solve for one side of our triangle, let's say we're trying to solve for the length A. We're given B, we're given C, and we're asked to find A. What we're going to do is rearrange our equation so that we get A completely by itself. It'll go like this. First off, we'll subtract B squared from both sides of the equation, leaving us with A squared is C squared minus B squared. Then we'll take the square root of both sides of the equation, because the square root of A squared leaves us with A. So here's the equation that we would use if we're trying to solve for the value of a. One of the sides of the triangle a, we would take the square root of c squared minus b squared. I'm going to do this two more times. Let's say we're looking for side b and we're given side a and c. Then we would try to get b by itself. To do that, we would subtract a squared from both sides of the equation then take the square root of both sides, and there's our equation for b. I know I'm doing this very quickly, but just, just bear with me here. You don't need to do all of this math every time. All you need to remember is that if c is the largest, then you're taking c minus something else, okay? And c minus a, c minus b, or if you're trying to discover C, what is C when you're given A and B, then you're adding those other two amounts to get C. We usually write this equation like this. So everything else kind of stays the same except where the A, B, and C go. So our three equations, which are actually just one equation rearranged, will look like this. C is A plus B, B is C minus A, and A is C minus B. Those are your three equations, where you're plugging in the three different lengths of the sides of the triangle. Okay, Just remembering that your longest length, C, is subtracting one of your known length to get your unknown length. Okay, And I'll show you some examples, one example using each of those equations. But honestly, you don't need to write down all three of those equations. Um, but you can if you prefer to have them all written down. Let's go ahead and take a look. Find the missing length B. So in this case, we're given C, the longest side, and we're given A, 24 inches. So what we're going to do is plug them into this equation. Remember, it's just the longest length squared minus the other given length. So 25 squared minus 24 squared. 25 squared is 625 minus 24 squared, which is 576. We'll do that subtraction, which gets down to um, the square root of 49. And the square root of 49 is 7 inches. Now, 
Technically, the square root of 49 is plus or minus 7, but because it's a length, we don't measure in negative lengths. So we're just going to keep what we call the principal square root or the positive square root value, okay? Because it's going to be 7 inches, not negative 7 inches. So pretty much everything we're working with is going to be positive numbers. Let's look at another one where we're given length A and B and we're asked to find C. Notice C is the longest length, the hypotenuse. We're asked to find that, so we're going to be adding the other two lengths together. 9 squared plus 12 squared. 81 plus 144. I add them together, and then I take the square root of those values, always working in positive numbers, and the length of C is 15 centimeters. For our final question, I decided to throw a word problem in at you. Your right triangular garden has side lengths of 10 feet, 26 feet, and one side that is against the bushes so you can't measure it. Find the missing length. When I'm given a question like this, I usually like to draw a picture. So here is my triangle. as 26 feet from my hypotenuse, the longest side of the triangle. Um, 10 feet for the other side, and there's one side along the bushes that I can't measure. That's my unknown side. Basically, we're doing the same thing that we were doing before, um, only we're calculating this unknown side here. So I'm going to call that side A, just because we haven't used this equation yet. We've solved for B and we've solved for C, so I'm going to use this one and solve for A. But honestly, when it comes to right angle triangles, as long as you're, you've got the the C length in the right place, the other two can kind of interchange, and you've sort of seen that um, today with what we've done. So it doesn't matter if you call the bushes B or A, you're still going to be taking your larger value minus that amount. All right, so C squared minus B squared is um, 676 minus 100, which leaves us with A is equal to the square root of 576, and the square root of 576 is 24. 24 feet, again, we measure in positive numbers, so it wouldn't be plus or minus 24 feet, it would just be 24 feet. So 24 feet is the length of the side of this garden that is um, in the bushes, so I can't put a tape measure to it. All right, and that's how we would use this in solving word problems. Some common word problems. Sometimes they have questions about shadows. Like a person is standing up and his shadow length is this much. And basically if you draw it out, it would be the person is the upright side, the earth is the bottom, and then the shadow would be the, um, the hypotenuse. Right? And the shadow is actually laying on the ground, so sometimes it's like the length of his shadow, what's the distance from the top of his shadow to the top of his head? That would be the hypotenuse. So we sometimes get those ones um, with a shadow or a flagpole or something that's standing upright on the ground and has some kind of um, length going between the top of the upright object and the, the, the base, basically like here. Okay. In all cases, drawing it out using a right angle triangle is a great tool for actually seeing what you're being asked. Um, but really, there's not that much that you can be asked. It's this type of question. All right. Hope that lesson was helpful for you. Here is your Common Core anchor and your Pennsylvania eligible content. Have a wonderful day.